if you're willing, I would like to hear from each of you just briefly what it really was like. I mean, really, you know, we talk about the overview effect and we talk about the absence of national borders and the thinness of the atmosphere, but on a personal subjective level, what that experience was like for you. For me personally, I, I, I think it gives you perspective. Uh, you look down at the earth and it, you know, all of humanity, except for this handful of people that was living up on the space station with you, lived there. And you recognize how important that place is. And it's so big, you know, you realize how big it is. And you, you have no idea, I think, until you step away and see how big it is and how important it is for all of us to have that. And so you have that sense of perspective. And then you look out to the stars and you have you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of stars. And that's just in our galaxy. And there's billions and billions of galaxies. And to me, that that range of perspective that you get gives you this huge sense of how important we are and how little, uh, you know, less than a grain of sand on a beach that we are. Uh, so it's this really interesting sense of perspective for me that uh, I really felt very changed by the experience. I think one thing that sticks out for me is just the launch experience. Uh, it, it's it's absolutely amazing to to be a part of a launch where you're catapulting humans off the face of the planet into orbit. And to, and you know if you're a, a adrenaline junkie like a lot of us are, you know, and like to you know like flying jets and doing all these kinds of things, a ride on us on a rocket is absolutely amazing. And it's hard to explain the sheer acceleration, but when you're when you're going Mach 15, 15 times the speed of sound, and you're still accelerating like you're getting shot out of a cannon, it's an absolutely amazing experience. I remember one of the launches, one of the pilot commander at this point turns around and says, says, we are really hauling the mail. And there was no question about it. You are getting shot off the planet. So you're going someplace really fast. So it's an amazing experience. You know, I think we're all um, technically minded people and we go through an awful lot of training you know, before we fly. And so we ought to be ready for what that launch experience is like. And we ought to be ready for the view out the earth. And when you get there, despite all the training and despite sort of knowing exactly what it's supposed to feel like, you just can't believe it. I mean, it is so otherworldly. And and the the crime in a way is I can't touch that experience right now. It's It lives in a parallel universe. I know I was there. I have pictures and videos and all that. But I can't feel that, and um, and you kind of miss it. I mean, it's really an amazing um, life-altering not night, not night kind of. You definitely miss it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I the only thing I would add to what everybody else has said, it, it, you know, as Peggy said, it really changes your perspective on the planet. And um, every all of these folk know that I'm a very emotional person, and and I sh I show my emotions all the time. I I'll start weeping on you and people look going, there's something wrong with that guy. I thought they said that he was a general in the Marine Corps. Yeah, why is he crying? But, but it was like that on my first flight. You know, it, it's like, I guess about 15 minutes and you, you know, 15 minutes ago, you were laying there half asleep on the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center. And, and now you're passing over the British Isles. And, and in my case, because we had launched due east, I looked out the window and I saw this big island. At least I thought it was a big island. And it turned out to be the continent of Africa. And for me, uh, because I had spent a lot of time studying the geography of Africa as a person of African descent, because I thought I'd have an opportunity to kind of look at some of the countries from which my ancestors may have come. And I was ready to, you know, to see what Senegal looked like and what Nigeria looked like and all this other stuff. And I looked at this beautiful island that turned out to be the second biggest continent on the planet and there were no lines and no borders and I don't know why I really expected it to look like a globe but it didn't and all the way from the Mediterranean coast just going through the Sahara Desert down to the equatorial regions and I, I mean it was breathtaking and I literally wept I, I literally tears came to my eyes one because as Peggy said a while back I realized how insignificant I was uh, you know, that there was, I couldn't tell, there were no signs of people down there except for roads and bridges and long linear things you can see. 
but you can't see buildings and you definitely do not see people. And, and then it, it makes you step back and wonder, boy, how awesome is this to be here looking down on this place that we call home and a lot of things I thought about it, a lot of things I was taught about it, about differences in people and differences in countries and borders and boundaries, and that's all bunk. You know, it's all stuff that's in my head because somebody taught me that. Uh, so that that was that was the emotional thing that LA's talking about that I wasn't prepared for. And and I mean it just emotionally affected me. And it, and it did every single time I went to space. I never got a I never got accustomed to that, to being off the planet. Um, in a unique situation that very, very, very few people have an opportunity to do. It seems to me like you'd all go back. If you could. In a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. That's the so plan. <laughs> we, <laughs> we all, we, those of us who think in very long terms about the future of all this, you know, whether you're talking about colonies on Mars or the moon, you're talking about O'Neill cylinders or, or, future Axiom space stations all over LEO and, and maybe further, you know, you think about a, per, a truly permanent human presence in space, people who maybe even are born, live and die there on a long enough time scale. So I guess my last curiosity to ask y'all is if you had that choice, if you could live the rest of your time in space somewhere, let's say we could simulate gravity or back on earth, which would you choose? I'd be right here. I would be Charlie. I'd be here with my three. I, nothing, no experience I've had replaces the the, the incredible joy um, that I get looking into the eyes of my three beautiful granddaughters and and uh, and telling them about people like Peggy. And seriously, you know, um, and saying you know you can be like her, knowing that they can. Now, uh, that wasn't always the case. You know, when Peggy came along. I'm not sure that she had any belief that she could do what she's done right now. Nobody ever thought we'd have a, a female chief of the astronaut office, as an example. Not when I got there. That was that was out of the question. You, you were not going to have a non-military test pilot ever lead the astronaut office. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with those guys, too. I think what makes space so magical is being able to go there back and forth. I think, you know, it's going to be great one day when people can live there permanently, but it's it's just such a transformative experience and it really it really has its full meaning when you've been there and come back and share it with people and think back on it and then maybe get a chance to go again so the more we can go back and forth the more uh, the more ability to have that kind of transformative experience i think is, is really beneficial my only problem is i have to get my husband to be an astronaut too so he can go with and then we'll just stay <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I like that one.